live around there. Now, the residents of the park, I didn't want to show because that would be outing. We do have a couple of people living in the park, just for those who want to know. And that, that has been a constant for, for a long time, okay? In fact, it was the reason why Lot wanted to get rid of it, okay? And this park has been sold before. The deed was even placed in, uh, uh, the council said, in, in, in the name, and then the deal fell through. Yeah. Okay, so there has been many moves to get rid of this park and the deals have fallen through. Uh, developers, I believe, have found out what it will take to redevelop that and hold those, but it is, is not useful to them. It'll cost a fortune. Well, so you need high end, which was the condo move was going to go in there. And I understand that, I don't know if it was the railroad or, or the city put the fence up. Now, somebody said in the paper that it was the city that blocked off the access to the river. And I, I don't know. I don't know that. And I, and I can't say anything about that. I, okay, I can't say anything about it. However, what I can say is, let's not be stupid. Let the real voters get out there. Let, I, I went down there. Let's give, let's give Hodges Square new streets, new sidewalks. Do you do something for the homeowners? Yeah, you know, if you really want to do something, Kathy Mitchell, get out and plug for new streets. New streets with good sidewalks. How about, uh, 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 what do you call it? Bicycle paths, okay, around. They could go up to the Arboretum. If you really want to spend some money and do something real for people that live there, how about a beautification program for the whole area? Instead of your know, nostalgia, about a place that you used 60 years ago. Well, I hope now that you saw those clips that you understand uh, my position on the park. And uh, I, let me say this, even though I have uh, individuals that uh, went through the Coast Guard Academy, my real concern is as a New London citizen. I think it's a huge waste of money and taxpayers' money to invest in something that we're not going to get a real return in. I think it would be much wiser to take the money and enhance the community up there, and I mean through roads and sidewalks, and there may be other alternatives, okay, that we can turn that park over. There's underpasses up there uh, that could be made into wonderful parks and fenced in and everything, wasted land that is up in the area that could be utilized for a children's type of uh, playgrounds and everything. The underpass, it's done other places, okay, could be uh, cordoned off and uh, fenced in and equipment could be brought up there and uh, things could be done. But to invest in a no-win situation, a place that is uh, you can't even use most of it. We're talking about a basketball court that is unused now and a picnic area that clearly isn't being used. And uh, to throw all this money into it and bring it up to par is ridiculous. It's going to fall back where it's been for many, many years. It's the seven years I have been here. It has been in disarray and a mess. And the individuals that are going up there are not telling the truth about the condition of that park. You can go up, you can go down around the sides. You can see the roads are not clean, cleaned up down there. It's all patchy. You can see little parts where they did clean, but the, the most of it is not cleaned up and is not taken care of. So I guess that's it I want to say about the park, and that pretty much ends my, uh, uh, I think it should be sold to the Coast Guard and and it would be put into good use in that way. Some type of deal made out with the Coast Guard. With that, I'll leave the park. And, uh, well, I got a few more minutes, and I guess I'd like to uh, talk about, you know, I, I tell people about books that uh, are good reading and things like that. Uh, as you may be able to see over here, I know you can see, uh, our website, uh, www.nlhome.com. Uh, we, we're doing the campaign uh, against terror with the National um, 
the, the Church Alliance that is uh, uh, trying to stop torture, not all around the world, but here in the United States. Uh, I believe this book is uh, When the Prisoners Ran Walpole uh, by Bobby DeLaro and uh, friends. Bobby's part of the book. Uh, and uh, this is a great read if you, if you want to understand what's going on in the justice uh, system. Jamie Bessonette did a wonderful job putting this together. Ralph Ham's uh, contribution, uh, Ralph is still in, uh, is great. And uh, the Reverend uh, Canon Ed Rodman, great, great, great book. And as always, uh, John Vincent's book, Radical Jesus, I believe is a must read for anybody who's spiritual, religious. Uh, I think it's a great book. I think over here I'm, I'm talking about uh, uh, the execution squad fraud. Uh, by uh, uh, Stevie Doherty, uh, another another good book, um, real real situation. It's based on the Massachusetts uh, system and what was done to him. But I have an excellent book that was done by what I call a straight guy, uh, uh, nationally uh, renowned poet, writer, uh, professor from Arizona, Richard Shelton. And the book is Crossing the Yard. And Crossing the Yard is, uh, for me, I have to say, the best book that I have read, written by a straight individual on prisoners and, and, and his 30 years as a volunteer uh, in the Arizona State Prison. I don't really know the man. The man has uh, just wrote me recently. I've been in rooms with him uh, some time ago. I mean, uh, when I was uh, when I was out in Arizona, I really didn't know him. I knew a little bit of him, and, and uh, but this book, Crossing the Yard, is really a terrific read. Well written. Uh, it, it's a, it's just a, it's just a great read, and what he's done, and the amount of people that he helped, uh, people like myself, you know, that uh, people that uh, most people would think didn't have a chance to change, he did some wonderful work. He lost a lot of people too, obviously, and and he he really talks about what what happened, and uh, uh, for anybody, uh, if you're a reader. And uh, uh, you will enjoy, I really think you, Richard Shelton's book, Crossing the Yard. I, I, it would be great if you, if you get it. Now, that, now that Kenny Lamberton, Ken Lamberton is, was, a, was a prisoner out there. Two terrific books that he wrote, not, okay? Wilderness uh, and Razor Wire. Uh, it's a naturalist obse observation uh, from, from prison. I haven't even got to uh, uh, Ken's book, this one here, but I understand it's uh, it got great reviews. It's another one uh, I'll be I'll be talking about, and 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 then he has a time of grace. So you can go on the internet, Ken Lamberton. Uh, you can go on the internet, Google Barnes and Nobles. They have uh, they have the books, and uh, I think you'll find them to be. Uh, really something that you'd uh, you, you'd like to read especially again crossing the yard I mean it was just it really impacted me it was a nice uh, of course I I knew uh, everybody he was talking about because I did uh, as most people know father had did time in Arizona I did uh, uh, about three years a little over three years uh, and I, my second bit, my first bit, of course, was Walpole State Prison right up the road. Uh, now they call it uh, something Junction, uh, not Petticoat Junction, but uh, I forgot off the top of my head. But uh, Walpole, when I was in Walpole, was uh, at that time the most violent prison in the country. Had a population of 565. It was relatively new, and it was... Uh, and, and, and this book, uh, When the Prisoners Ran Walpole, is, uh, is about conditions that happened when the guards walked out and, uh, and it went from the most violent prison in the country to nobody even got slapped in about three months. So 